by PWW. And tonight we're on lesson number nine, the rewards of praying in the secret place. And let's begin with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, God, to gather around your word. We ask that you reveal to us your word and give us a mind to apply this lesson to our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Tonight. Again, the rewards of praying in the secret place and the aim of this lesson is to show how God answer, answers prayers prayed in the secret place. In our memory verse, it comes from Matthew chapter 7. We'll read verses 7 and 8. It says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. So, all three of these verbs, all three of these things that's in this text are instructions or commands, you know, and they're all given in the present tense. So we are told to ask and keep on asking, seek, keep on seeking, knock and keep on knocking. And this basically shows us how the progression of our prayer life should be, how our prayer life should be, should go. Uh, first, we're supposed to ask because there's some things that, you know, we may need or we may not understand. So we ask God for him. We ask God for the direction or we ask God for whatever it is that we need. Secondly, we seek God and seeking God is a deeper part of praying than just asking. And we thank God for him making a way for us so through the Holy Ghost for, you know, when we don't know what to pray, as we read in Romans 8, 26 and 27, uh, the spirit will begin to speak for us. And seeking God, like I said, it goes far beyond us just asking him for stuff. You know, it goes to seeking his will, seeking his direction, and we go deeper into prayer. And therefore, when we go deeper into prayer, we're seeking God's will for our lives. And thirdly, we knock. You know, if I'm knocking on the door, I'm expecting it to be open. You know, and that eight verse tells us, for everyone that asketh receive it, and he that seeketh find it, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. So it's encouraging for us as believers to know that God hears and answers prayer. You know, he may not answer the way we want. You know, sometimes it's a yes, sometimes it's a no, sometimes it's a not yet, but he's definitely going to answer our prayer. So, uh, Matt Mark eleven twenty four says, therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that we receive them and ye shall have them. Now, what things soever you desire, when you desire something, that means you go beyond just wanting it. You 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 begging for it. You you requesting it. Uh, you want it. You know. You go past just simply just I want this. You do what it takes when you desire something. You know. So it sounds like a blank check though when you hear whatsoever things you desire. But we have to understand when we talk about rewards or blessings from God. The, the key to praying is always we have to pray according to his will. And it has to line up with his word. First John 5, 14 and 15 says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So when we talk about being rewarded in the secret place and we are praying in the presence of God, one thing we have to remember as saints of God is that prayer must always be based on what he wants and not what we want. When we talk about these rewards and him blessing us, he rewards us based on what he wants us to have and not what we necessarily want. Now, he does give us the desires of our heart, but when he rewards us, when he blesses us, it's according to the things that he know that will help us grow into being the saints of God that He's want, he wants us to be. So again, just like when we're dealing with our giving, now that we're dealing with our praying and our prayer life and the rewards that come with it, you know, it got, it, it's more to do with uh, not not it's not your asking but it's how you're asking it's your approach that's what we, we were talking about it's your approach to prayer are your motives in the right place uh are you desire what are you praying for or petitioning god for is it to glorify god you know so when it comes to be being rewarded rewarded uh in the secret place through our prayer we a big key is that we have to believe you know, we have to believe if we don't believe what we're praying for, if we don't believe in the God that we're praying for. We'll never receive. 
But our lesson uh, tonight is not only was talking about us uh, rewards of praying in the secret place, you know, uh, praying alone, but it was praying out. It's talking also about the benefits that we can get when we pray in the secret place together. You know, we can be rewarded when we pray on one accord. And he mentioned Psalms 133. Verse one, it says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And our lesson gives us three examples uh, or three rewards that come from us being with one accord when it comes to prayer. Uh, it talks about the anointing, it talks about uh, the, a refreshing and a blessing. And we just see uh, all three of these examples. If you're familiar with this um, text, Acts in Acts chapter four, verses 23 through 31. Um, we'll just read verses 29 through 31 for the re for the brief summary of the lesson. And it says, And now, Lord, behold, their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word with boldness. So there is power. When we come together with one accord and after they praise God in the verses before verse 29, they start asking him for specific things concerning uh, what they were going through or what they were facing. And they prayed for God just to take notice. They didn't whine. You know, they just asked God, you know, of course, they already knew God knew the situation because the eyes of the Lord are in every place. But they reminded him anyways. And this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to do the same thing. Uh, when we facing the hard times in situations and they pray to be filled, they pray for the filling of the Holy Ghost so they may speak the word. And that's a reward in itself. We don't want to be, we don't want to ask God to be filled with the Holy Ghost just to speak in tongues or just to dance. No, we want to be effective saints and that's a reward. In itself, these people took the place of servants before God and they bowed humbly, you know, before God. And ask him to take them and use them for his glory. And we need this same power. You know, we need this power to be on our churches, on our families, on his people. You know, so they pray for God to intervene. You know, they ended this prayer by asking God to personally get involved in the situation. In verse 30, it says, by stretching forth thy hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. They wanted him to demonstrate his approval of the church by manifesting his power through the church. And that's a reward, not only for us, but that's a reward for the people that we are going to be witnessing to, or that we're going to be helping, or that we're going to be uh, having any kind of interactions with. We need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to be empowered so we could, you know, be effective saints. And nothing honors God as much as does the prayer of faith. And the reward of prayer is always God answering prayer. And the bottom line is this, like it says in our book, the reward of praying in the secret place is answered prayer. When you pray in secret, God rewards you openly. And this is especially true when you unite with others, and brothers and sisters in Christ. And we see that the reward of prayer is uh, uh, always God's power. This wasn't no everyday prayer meeting that we are studying on tonight. And as soon as they finish praying to God, they experienced an answer to their prayer. You know, we pray, but we don't pray like they pray. And then we want to be rewarded for having a half a prayer life. But you got to have a prayer life. <laughs> you, if you're going to be uh, an effective saint, and if you're going to stay saved, you're going to stay in the will of God, you're going to stay knowing the word of God, you got to you the only way you if you don't know how to pray you learn how to pray by praying just like you do everything else you learn how to ride a bike by getting on that bike you learn how to do your job because you keep going and you keep being, allowing them to train you on how to do the job we can ask god we learned last week ask him to teach you how to pray teach us how to pray therefore we can learn and be effective even in our prayer lives uh we usually start praying when we shook up by something, but we see these paper people, they were praying to be shook. So we need to pray fervently. We need to pray specifically. And us as body of believers, by reading this text, we need to learn how to pray with one accord. You know, when we learn to pray, we by asking God for the things that seem to be impossible, and we believe that he's going to make it happen. 
And the early church had the power of God on them because they prayed with one mind. And when they called on God, he heard and he answered them. And the place was shaken. When God shows up, it can't be hid. You know, and we we need God to shake us, especially during these times where we're living in. You know, we need him to move in our services. We need him to move in our lives. And we need him to uh, shake us. We, and this is where we see the reward when we talk about the anointing and the refreshing, you know, we see this because these people got what they prayed for. They were rewarded and God came in. Everybody that was looking for something got what they were looking for. And this verse says that they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. And we need that refreshing. When you get like our book, in our it's a, a part in our books, it says you need that refreshing when you get spiritually dry. When certain things dry up in your life, you need that do of refreshing when things get hot and you get thirsty, especially thirsty for change. Are you thirsting for a change in your life? Well, you can quench your thirst by spending time in the secret place, united in prayer with your brothers and sisters. And we see this being manifested in the lives of these people uh, in Acts. You know, uh, just imagine if, you know, all of us, everyone would feel, if every church was 100%, you know, filled with the Holy Ghost. You know how they trying to, you know how they want everybody to be vaccinated. You know, they're pushing that, pushing, pushing. How as many people, you know, let's get as many people as we can. But us as the church, we can push the same. We can, let's, everybody need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> everybody need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. But God still hears and answers the prayers of his people. You know, we've been commanded to pray. Luke 18 and 1 says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray. And so the Bible tells us that they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. And like I said, you know, they begin to speak the word with boldness. These people desire to change. You know, they want to stay the way that they were. And this is what we see. This is the example of the refreshing. In Acts 3, 19, it tells us that the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So when we are in the presence of God, we can be sure that we'll be rewarded with the anointing, with the refreshing, with the blessing. And they needed a change. And when God began to move, they didn't stay quiet, but they started to speak his word. They desired to be effective saints. And when God rewarded them with what they sought God for, they began to be effective saints and do what they desire to do. You know, the people were, were, were with one accord in prayer and the boldness that they got after the Holy Ghost came in also helped them to be free to worship God. So all of these things, the anointing, the refreshing, the blessing, all are rewarded when we pray with sincere hearts and we come together with one accord and we pray according to God's will. Amen. So we thank God for you joining us today for YPWW. And I'm going to leave you with question number two. How significant or important is it for saints to reap the rewards of anointing, refreshing, and blessing? Which one of these are you most in need of at this time in your life? Amen. So we thank God for you joining us. And let's end with a word of prayer. God, we thank you. We magnify your name, God. We thank you for every individual that watches this video, God. We pray that your word helps them, God. We ask you to continue to help us as we gather together as your saints, as your children, and study your word, God, because we desire to walk pleasing before your sight. And God, we pray for every sinner, God, that you save them, every backslider that you reclaim them. Oh, God, and we pray for each, each and every individual, each and every saint, God, that you refresh them, God. God, help us, God. Teach us how to pray, God. God, we thank you, God, for being a rewarder to them that diligently seek you. And God, we pray for each and every person, God, that has a loved one. We pray that you heal them even now, that you deliver, that you set free, that you touch the minds, God, of our, our people, God. We pray for every community, God, that watches this video, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for protecting us. And God, we pray, God, that you refresh and strengthen every believer, God. Give us all the strength to hold on and seek your face, God. Oh, God, we give you all the praise, all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Amen. We love you. God bless you. God keep you again. We are the Bethel Church of God in Christ, Plain Dealing, Louisiana. Pastor Donald Douglas is our pastor. Thank God for our first lady. Amen. And all of the saints of God from Bethel and all of you. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the page. Continue to share. Uh, continue to share the page.
our uh, service description, our service hours and times and conference calls will be in the descriptions. We would love to have you uh, tune in. We will continue to put the services online, but we look forward to you joining us. We look forward to this every week uh, just to encourage the saints of God with the word of God. So until next week, we love you. God bless you. God keep you.